Welcome to Mind Pump, your favorite fitness and health podcast. Now, in today's episode, we answer fitness and health questions asked by our audience, but we also do an introductory portion where we talk about our lives, we tell stories, and sometimes we mention our sponsors. Here's what went down in today's episode. So we start out by talking about our Valentine's Day Viori gifts for our significant Ooh, others. V-Day. Now, Viori makes the best athleisure wear. In fact, they have a pair of, uh, of pants that I love called the Sunday Performance Joggers, now in indigo color. You got to go check it out. They have the best athleisure wear, extremely comfortable, durable, and the, it's a Those lifetime. Some handsome joggers. Lifetime guarantee. Oh, and also because you are listening to Mind Pump, you get 25% off all their products, including their brand new just dropped spring collection. Here's how you get the discount. Go to Viori Clothing. That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code that's listed on the page. Get a full 25% off your total order. Then we talked about the drinking game that we did called Wheel of Misfortune. Should have been called Wheel of Death. Yes, I know we're a health and fitness podcast, but there's a reason why we did this. We started working with a new sponsor called Z-Biotics, and they make a genetically engineered probiotic that produces an enzyme that breaks down the byproduct of alcohol that is often responsible for the effects of a hangover, the crappy feeling. So we thought, what better way to test this new product <laughs> than just get- Let's just, test the limits. Let's get destroyed. And that's what we did. And uh, you'll hear in the episode, 100% true, uh, we are blown away by how we feel today. I should not be yeah. here at work. I shouldn't even be alive. And uh, we feel okay. The stuff is pretty insane. Anyway, we have a hookup for you, okay? If you want to try this out, this is what you do. Go to Z Biotics. That's the letter Z B I O T I C S dot com forward slash mind pump. You'll get 10% off the Z Biotics three pack, six pack, and 12 pack. So we got you the hookup. Give it a try. Let us know how you like it. Then we talked about death metal. Um, and at My favorite subject. So cool. We talked about Samsung's new folding phone. And then we talked about SEO for movies and how that makes a big difference, apparently, in, in getting ticket sales. Then we got into answering the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This is a woman asking us about chest exercises and wants to know how it'll affect the appearance of her breasts. So we talk all about that in that part of the episode. The next question, this person says, hey, how do you change your diet on days you work out versus days you don't work out. Should you change your diet? We actually had a differing of opinions here and discussed the benefits of eating less on non-training days or eating more on non-training days. The next question, this person wants to know if we have an elevator pitch that'll help them convince family members to start lifting weights. So we hooked them up with some sales tips. And the final question, this person says, look, uh, I need to learn how to enjoy certain healthy foods like salmon. I can't stand it. But are there any techniques or strategies to be able to build new associations with the food so I can start to eat it? Use butter. And we talk about uh, nacho cheese helps a lot. Yeah. And we talk a lot about our strategies and things that we've found success with our own clients. Also, before the episode starts, check this out. MAPS split is 50% off. Now, what is that? That is our extreme, advanced, awesome bodybuilding physique competitor, uh, bikini competitor inspired workout program. It's six days a week in the gym. You get phenomenal results. If you love working out, you love lifting weights, you want to shape and sculpt your body, this program will produce pretty tremendous results. Again, it's 50% off. Here's how you get the half off discount. Go to mapsplit.com. That's M-A-P-S-S-P-L-I-T.com and use the code SPLIT50. That's S-P-L-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. And it's t-shirt time. Oh, shit, dog. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Oh, yeah. We have two winners for iTunes, one for Facebook. The winners for iTunes are Just Hag Freak 808 mm, And for Facebook, we got Angela Beamer. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to Beamer. iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. I got to thank Rachel, man. She uh, she definitely saved my ass on Valentine's Day. We had so much going on, and we had the, the little drinking party going on and stuff like God, that. Yeah. So we'll I didn't, get, to that. I didn't yeah. get around to uh, getting much for Katrina for Valentine's Day, but she had already picked her up um, a new outfit from uh, Viore. 
got something from her new sprint, the spring collection oh, that they just released. Clutch. I know, yeah. right? So came in clutch. Totally. And she didn't sell me out either. So she didn't wrap me out and say, like, she got it. She yeah, was, we look really yeah, good. Thank yeah. God. At least Although I, got that. I just realized this is going to be on the podcast. So they'll know now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Yeah. Anyway, um, so how do you boys feel? Because. Uh, <sighs> Are you guys as a little sh- sluggish? Are you? Yeah, a little bit. So here's here's the deal. We got to let in let the audience in on what happened um, yesterday. We are working with a new sponsor called Z Biotics. Well, first back up how we how we first mentioned them on the show, like what maybe two months ago. You read a study. I read a study yeah. about an, a genetically engineered probiotic that produced an enzyme. So you take it, these these bacteria, and by the way, they get this bacteria from natto, natto, which is a Japanese food, right? Fermented food. And they, they modified them so that they produce an enzyme that breaks down acetaldehyde, which is a byproduct. It's a, a byproduct of alcohol. Now, why is this important? Because scientists think that the buildup of, of acetaldehyde is one of the main reasons why you feel so shitty the day after you drink because mm. your body can only break down so much of it. Once it builds up real high, you get the inflammation, the headache, all the characteristics of a hangover. And I read this article and the journalist in the article is like, this stuff is amazing. And then people talked about how great it was. And I kind of knew a little bit about how alcohol causes problems. I thought it was brilliant. We brought it up on the podcast. We bring it up on the podcast, just you dropping it as a study. Yeah, we weren't even no, working with them. No, no affiliation at all. Just you coming across your daily studies. They get this huge spike in sales out of nowhere. They're trying to figure it out for a few weeks. They finally get enough people that are actually emailing in and telling them like, oh, heard about this on Mind Pump. So that gets them to reach out to us, and then the conversation starts. Mm -hmm. And the, the crazy part about it is... The people that report back after taking this, I, I can't remember, it's either 80-something or 90-something percent of people say they feel a significant difference. And yes. so we had, before we did anything with them, so this is, we're backing up like a few months back, right, when this all first started. Mm-hmm. We have them send, of course, a, a kit over to us so we can go ahead and yeah. try it out ourselves. I had three of them. We brought it to Sal's uh, birthday party in Vegas. Was that when we brought it? Yeah, it was the first time we had it. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I and gave it to you guys because I only brought two. I'm thinking, like, I got one for me and, like, a backup or whatever. I ended up giving them both to you guys and didn't get to try it out. But yeah, uh, yeah. you guys got to try it out. Yeah, so we, we tried it in Vegas, and, you know, that night um, I drank – not super heavy, but heavy enough to where, and I'm look, I'm 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 old enough and experienced enough with alcohol to know the feeling that I have the next day, <laughs> or the too much, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I it's know, like it's I like, know when too much hits. Yeah, it's like a it's like a, a toxic yeah, feeling. It's pretty it's, obvious. It's hard to it's hard to you know I, if you've ever been drunk and had a hungover hangover the next day, you know what I'm talking about. It's this toxic kind of gross feeling. Yeah. So we took it. We went out. We drank. I drank a little a little bit too much, and I woke up the next day and I felt remarkably. Okay. Like, I mean, remarkable in the sense that I was shocked. Yeah. Adams, too. I remember we, we called each other and we're both like, what the? So we decided to work with a company and then we had a great idea. <laughs> I think Rachel's great idea. Ra- yeah. Let's, yeah. let's, 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 pu- let's put push it to the, the limits. It was yeah, a let's, great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Let's Initially. push the limits. Yeah. Dude, so we yeah. did a- Not for me. We did a drinking game. And Wheel we thought, of misfortune. Yeah. And we thought yeah. it would be a good test and potential commercial. Now, here's the deal. <laughs> The te- the game you spin a wheel and then you have to do what it says on the wheel and without going too much detail yeah um the you have three lives every time you have to take a shot unless everybody takes a shot so when you do you that five lives you loot no well the game says three lives oh okay right, right. Rachel thought hey right. let's do five lives okay. like that's a great yeah, idea yeah we want to make yeah. sure they're definitely getting in they're drunk our, our first mistake yeah. yeah but here's the thing that you don't realize when you play the game you don't always lose a life when you take a shot when yeah. we all have to take a shot <laughs> yeah. doesn't count. So here we are playing the game, doing shots every time it tells us to, and the game's moving fast. So you're like, within an hour, yeah. I, I lost. Okay, so I didn't even do as many as, as Adam or Jess did. You, yeah. guys, you guys got messed up. Way too many. I was out after about, I'd say, seven or eight shots. Mm-hmm. In And this is within 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I, I was out. I haven't taken that many shots of alcohol uh, since I was probably... 
20 years old. I mean, there was, when, I, when we were kids, we used to have this, like, you know, you weren't, you weren't drunk until you threw up. That's what was our stupid thing that we used to say. Yeah. Right? And that's when you're, like, when you're 20 and it's like that you, you, you live for Friday nights, right? We would sit down and we would do, like, a... We get we couldn't afford it much, so we got the you know the cheapest huh. pop off vodka, the Thunderbird. Big, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Sure. The big plastic gallon of vodka, Gilbert's and vodka. the three of us would sit around, and this is what it reminded me of: just shot after shot after shot after shot, just taking Ugh. turns oh, until, until I, it was gone. I'm gonna be 100 percent honest. That I was hate shots. bro. That was the most drunk I've been in. At least over a decade. No, I'm telling yeah. you. I have not At been that drunk. Two decades for me. It hasn't been since yeah. I was 20 years old since I've done something like Probably that. Probably the same. We here. were smashed. And here's yeah. the, the funny part totally was. Totally annihilated. The only one of us that was excited for the drinking game and who was just like, yeah. this is great. Yeah. I can't wait. It's so fun. Was Justin. I wanted to see you guys get like on that level. And then, yeah, I, I was like way over hyping it and, and paid the Bro, price. Bro, you, 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 you danced on the dark side there. I did. You, so what happened? I left. I saw, I had to take off. Jessica had to come well, pick me up. I was destroyed. And yeah. I know you had, you were drinking straight whiskey. Yeah. I had Fireball, which is not nearly as strong. Yeah. And I was watching you progressively. It become just, more and more. I, I morphed. <laughs> I would you, say, yeah, you, yeah. So you got sick, right? When we left. Yeah, I got, I got really sick. Uh, <laughs> so I think, yeah, well, I think because I ate a, a decent amount for lunch and, and trying to kind of prep. And I think what happened was like it just finally got past the food, you know, and hit it, you all it at hit once. me all at once. And then it was just like I pretty much blacked out. I didn't, like I didn't remember a whole lot other than I was like just puking my guts out. Oh my god! <laughs> so I, was yeah. hug, I was hugging the toilet, doing the old like no one in here. Yeah, too? The, the worst oh! one ever, dude. Oh, I was, I was so like me throw I up took like itself. ten showers when I got home. You know, I was just like <laughs> this, this toilet doesn't even work that it's well. The day where I could even like flush all of it down, <laughs> dude. And I'm like looking at it. And, oh god. Oh my. Oh god. the humanity. Uh, now, how many? Do you know how many shots you took? Well, Rachel will count it. No, up. I have no idea. I think I think. They're gonna, I think they're gonna count it up on the video when they when they do the video. I think they're gonna keep track. Of I think how you much. guys hit like eleven. I know I push. I know oh I push God. ten. Ugh. I know I did. But this is ten shots of straight alcohol in in an Dude. hour. Yeah, yeah. I know that bottle is dangerous. That bottle is done. And then I still, my last shot I remember was a, a Jack Daniels. That's the last thing you remember. Yeah, <laughs> that's the last thing I remember. No, no, no. Hey, so so. <laughs> So I I knew this we were gonna do this game and I figure and I am I'm a lightweight anyway right so I told Jessica drop me off at work and then I want you to come pick me up after, but when she came to pick me up she had to pick up my daughter first and then my son right so my kids are in the car oh god okay oh. okay so yeah, my I'm, kids came to pick and, me up too we'll oh get dude to that. so I get in the car and I'm like I don't want my kids to know their dad got smashed oh. on a Thursday at work you know so. <laughs> So, <laughs> we're such degenerates. Oh, dude. So oh. I, I get in the car and my daughter, first thing my daughter goes, what's that smell? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, it smells gross. What do you, you smell funny. Yeah. My son, oh, she said that right away. Yes. Oh God. My son's looking at me and he's like, and he, and I had told him a while ago about Z-Biotic that we were, that this company he goes, is today the day you got drunk? And I'm like, oh, a little bit, you know, I'm fine. <laughs> then as we're driving, this is my face the whole time in the car. I'm like, cause I was like maintaining like. Yeah. I am not going to let my kids know. My, my daughter goes, why are you making your face that way? <laughs> why you, how do you look like that? We get in the house and my, my, my son's like, uh, you should go take a nap. I said, yeah, I'm going to go take a nap. Yeah. Now, Doug, you were also visibly inebriated. You got destroyed. You're the smallest, lightest guy in here. How did you, what's, how did you feel? What's the deal? In now? Yeah. <laughs> or, or then? Well, then too. Did you get sick too? I didn't. Okay. Not good. at all. So I was nowhere near where Justin was. As a matter of fact, um, he, Doug was helping. I out. was his caretaker. Yeah. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, remember so that. everybody Thank left you, last you night, <laughs> and uh, yeah. this asshole was actually considering <laughs> driving. He thought he was okay. Oh to drive. my god! We so were all, I said, yeah. Justin, no, there's no way. There's <laughs> yeah. no way you're going. <laughs> And so uh, he, he called of his wife, and then the next thing he does is he disappears, and then I hear this retching sound oh! coming from the bathroom. Bathroom. <laughs> hey, I made it to the bathroom. You got to give me that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. that's awesome. So yeah. he's in there for a good, I don't know how, 45 minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just had to stay Kneeled there Kneeled down yeah, right I mean? before the throne. Yeah. Oh, oh that bathroom. Puking yeah. his guts out. I oh. mean, and, and these are like dry heaves, it sounds like. I was oh. nervous for you, though, Doug, too, because you were really yeah. worried, and you were pretty smashed before. You were the... Were you the first or second one out? Did Sal go out first? I was the second one out. Yeah, Sal went out first, yeah. then Doug, then Justin. Yeah. Well, I thought this game, 
if I were to lose, meaning get out first, you that would I win. would, I would no, that I would drink the most. Oh, I, that's what I thought the rules were when I first started. So yeah. I was pretty nervous about losing. Like, but in fact, by losing, I won. Right? Yeah. It's kind of losing. It, you get it out. is kind of ironic the way the game is set up that if you win, you end up taking the most shots because you've yeah. had to outlast everybody. So you're not much of a winner. Afterwards. Not really. <laughs> Should have yeah. thought that. Way. But oh. I did probably do seven to eight. <clears throat> oh, I know. I was, Adam was sitting on the couch, and you, you're not one normally to complain or anything like that. And you're like, bro, you're like I haven't been. I don't know when the oh, last no. time I was this destroyed. Well, I so I have like and right away. So Doug and uh, Ju- did Justin go with us to Whole Foods? Yes, we okay. walked to Whole yep. Foods. So like what I've learned from just all- say weaved yeah. to Whole Foods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We uh, we went for Wobbled. a long walk. So we we t- right away like because Katrina asked me because she knows that's how that's what if I the f- handful of times she's seen me drunk. Uh, I'll just take off and I just go for a walk for like hours just to burn burn it off, dude. Like the, yeah. I think the worst thing you can do when you're that fucked up is to go lay down and try and close your eyes. Oh, if I close spin, my eyes, oh yeah, the room's yeah. spinning. Like I'm, that's how bad we were. So I'm like, I have to burn some of this off or else I'm, I don't care how magical Z-Biotic is, I'm going to be hung over yeah. because yeah. how bad I was. Right. So we went walking to Whole Foods. But Doug bought a whole loaf of uh, French bread, and then him and I just were tearing it off and eating it dry, just back and forth that's until it. it was gone, dude. We Fre- walked, yeah, French. That's your, that's your that's your drunk meal. Yeah, dude, just <laughs> eating that back and forth and, and soak it up. Walked all the way back from Whole Foods. Then Katrina came and picked me up. Then I went home, and I I sat on the couch for a second, and I did. I knew I was like, oh, I can't sit down yet. If I stopped moving, I got worse. And so I was like, I'll walk with the dogs. So I just took each so, dog for a walk for like a long ass So time. I want to give a disclaimer, okay? Do not do what we did yeah. uh, at all. First yes. off, We're I, professionals. Don't, I don't think we anticipated getting that destroyed. That that was way overboard. And way number, overboard. And number two, it's dangerous. I mean, let's be honest. That was just a silly amount. But here's the trippy part, and this is 100% true. Crazy. This is crazy. First off, I haven't been that drunk in at least 10 years. 100% the next day I would feel like complete oh, yeah. and utter I'm I'm blown away. I'm blown, I'm blown away by how I feel right now. Oh, I, it's, you know what? It's here's weird. And here's the real. I I feel very tired. Yes. Because yes. I didn't sleep. Yes. Right. I mean, I was so drunk that at 2 in the morning I was still drunk, you know, stumble into the bathroom to go pee and stuff and yeah. I'm still drinking water trying to fall asleep. So I didn't get a good night's sleep for sure. Like I definitely. Oh, I don't. I don't feel great, but no. I, I feel I just tired. Feel t- I just feel tired. Yes, that's but all I, don't, I feel. I don't feel nauseous. I don't have a headache. I don't feel dehydrated. At all. I feel totally fine. It's 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 wild. But yeah, no, it's blowing my it's mind. It's wild. Like I woke up this morning, and you know, Jessica's like, you know, how how are you doing? And I'm like, you know, I worked out this morning. I woke up at five a.m. and lifted. Oh, you trained even? <laughs> swear to God. Wow. I swear to God. I'm I too tired to get up. Now early I didn't train. have I didn't have like a spectacular workout, but the fact that I worked out is testament uh to how i'm literally it's almost i'm almost in disbelief because normally i'd be aching my whole body yeah. i'd feel feverish mm-hmm. i'd have a throbbing painful headache and instead what i feel like is i just had bad sleep yeah which to me is just i i, I swear to god i feel like this company came up with it now here's the thing you can't say it's a a, a, a hangover cure or anything like that I yeah know, what's the, FDA, the what's the reason for that i remember him telling when we were on the phone and we were first talking and it's like it's like one of those things that like they, they tell they you called all, it a condition. Now, well, they right? tell you like how magical it is. Like as we're off, you know, yeah. offline talking, they're like, "But listen, you have to be very careful. You can't say all these things and make wild claims. But you just wait, you'll see when you take no, it. No, you can't. There's a be, reason why you can't. Yeah, the FDA uh, regulates uh, a hangover as a medical condition, so you can't make a medical claim unless it's a FDA approved substance or drug for that medical condition. Now, I know there's studies going on. So that's probably going to be something that they will be able to talk about later once the studies come out and all that stuff. So what we're talking about is simply our own anecdote. And it also, here's another thing that's important. It doesn't allow you to drink more in the sense that you're, you're still going to get drunk. So that's an important thing to understand. It's not like you take, you're going to take Z-Biotics and now I can drink way more. No, no, no. You get just as drunk as right. you did before. So you still got to be you know, very careful. Um, but uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's pretty uh, pretty remarkable at the at the uh, I can't I can't now Justin I want to know because you got sick you never get sick you have yeah. the, you have the most tolerance for drinking you have an iron stomach I don't think you well, ever throw up so yeah. how do you feel 
Yeah. I, and the thing is, like, I, I don't drink fast like that either. Like, it, that was, like, in such a short period of time and, like, just, you know, way too much, you know. And, and, and so, like, I, I puked my guts out, everything. Like, I, I was in there and then I, I ended up home. Thank God, you know, Courtney came to pick me up. Um, but to be honest, I just, like, I, I slept on the couch for a bit and got up and then I felt like almost normal again. It was really bizarre. Like it's, I started drinking water and then was coming back and like, it was like I was resurrected, dude. It was weird. And and then now, now today I feel super tired and like, I, I feel like I, I was in Vegas for three days and like hadn't slept yeah. or whatever, but I don't feel like, like you're talking about the pains, like in terms of, I used to have like really gut wrenching pain. If I ever got that sick, like uh, the next morning I was like guaranteed, I'm going to still puke and I'm going to have headaches yeah. and I'm going to be achy. And I don't have any of that. I just feel really lethargic and I, I don't feel mentally sharp or anything right now, <laughs> yeah. but I'm definitely could be a lot worse. It's, it's really trippy. Oh, but I, I swear. What, I mean, what a great uh, commercial for Zubotic. I swear. But it's a hundred percent true. And we really did. Well, even, I, I put it to the ultimate test. Oh, well, this yeah, the way we, I just the way it. we found this company was completely organic. You know, I mean, it was, we, you were just reading some crazy study. We could, we didn't believe it. There's no way this could work that yeah, great. It out. Let's test it out. Oh my God. The first time we test it, okay, let's push the limits and see what so, happens. So, I mean, so literally yeah. what happens again, this is acetylaldehyde builds up in the system. It's a byproduct of, of alcohol metabolism. And your body breaks that down into more benign things like acetate and, and something else. But there's an enzyme that does that, that the liver produces. And the problem is that this enzyme runs out. You have a limited supply. So, once this enzyme runs out, you can't break down any more of it, and you get acetylaldehyde buildup, and that buildup is toxic and inflammatory to the body. And they say, and studies show that this is one of the main reasons, besides dehydration and lack of sleep, one of the main reasons you feel so so toxic the next day. Now, a lot of people wonder why can't I just take that enzyme? Why can't I just supplement with the enzyme that breaks down mm -hmm. acetylaldehyde? The reason you can't is because enzymes are basically proteins. And if you take it by mouth, your gut breaks it down and it doesn't get through the system and break down the alcohol. So what you do when you take this genetically modified bacteria is the bacteria goes through your gut and it produces this enzyme throughout your gut. So as you're drinking throughout the night or whatever, you have ample amounts of this enzyme to break down this acetylaldehyde. It's Absolutely brilliant. It's so brilliant that I actually worry that it's going to increase people's, uh, how much people drink. I think it's going to give people the, the, the green card to drink more because. Well, of course it's going to yeah. do that. You know? Dude. No, of course it's going to do that. What's their, what's their tag? Have you seen their tagline? It's uh, drink like there is a tomorrow. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah, if people like say that. drink that like there's no tomorrow, it's dude. drink like there is a tomorrow. Dude. But I tell you yeah. what, this is it now. Now I, now I have something that if we, because we don't drink very often, but when we do, I always feel shitty the next day. I hate alcohol. It makes me feel like. Dirt, right. like dirt the next day. But now that we have this, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a little bit. It's a bit, good tool in the toolbox. It's going to be just a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Well, you know, I, I remember, what was it, like two years ago when you introduced the whole charcoal thing. And that was like game changer for me. Because up, right. up until Mind Pump, like I never had alcohol, ever. Like mm -hmm. I would go over a year and not have a drink ever. Like it just was not my thing because I always felt miserable. Then you introduced charcoal and that made a big difference. But this shit's on that. Even. Oh, dude! Yeah. I mean, as as much as that helped me, this is is a, on a whole. Like other I level. said, I haven't I haven't felt like that in in at least a decade. It, it was a it's a it's you know when you get so if you're listening right now, you know what I'm talking about when you get so drunk that you start to pray. You know what I mean? Where you're like, <laughs> like please just let me get through this yeah. right now, and I I'll you I'll know be I'll be a better person. I'll be a good person. <laughs> it was it was that kind of uh, of a feeling. It wasn't very good. Hey, but yeah. anyway, so I, I like I said, uh, I woke up this morning. And was able to work out. By the way, Justin, I want to talk. I want to ask you something. I know you're the death metal, yeah, um, like uh, what is it? Um, like aficionado. Yeah, yeah, you're you're the guy, right? I am definitely. I almost never listen to the lyrics of death metal. I just <laughs> lift, and it's just ah, you know, and I work out. Yeah, they're a little scary sometimes. But huh? because my workout was a little slower, mm -hmm. because I wasn't, you know, I didn't get good sleep last night. Yeah, you needed that extra encouragement. I just, I, for whatever reason, I started paying attention to the lyrics, uh -huh. and I realized something. The lyrics to death metal is just a bunch of like angst. 
It's a bunch of dudes who are like pissed off that their girlfriends are, are mean oh, to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so swear to God, dude. Yeah, some of them. Like, uh, I don't know if you listen to a band like Hate Breed or something. It's, they're not death metal, but like they're more. Uh, I guess like hardcore metal, I guess you'd say. Uh, but that's like empowering music. If you listen to their lyrics, it's all like about like how to overcome and like, you know. Uh, okay. the, yeah, so it, it just depends on the genre, but that's hilarious. So death know? metal is like all just angsty. Yeah, I'm listening to it. It's like, you know, I hate you. you know? And I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute. But this, think, but think of really the demographic. Off. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's all these teenage boys that, you know, they're kind of catering all to. All emo, so. black, all, all yeah. wearing all. But you know who does it? Who's the guy? I follow him on Instagram. Shout out to this dude because I love his content. Matt Newshell. Is that right? His last, oh, yeah. Is yeah. it New Shell? Right? I think you're right, yeah. Matt's his first name. I he want has to... an emo character yes, he brings out yes. all the time. And he does yeah. it all the time, dude. It's, it's, it's money, too. It's hilarious. I, be, I You know, I reached out to him probably, I, I don't know, almost a year ago when I first... He's blown up now when I first found his page. and I, The content yeah. he was putting, I'm like, oh, this dude's going to be big. Watch. And I tried to get him on the show way back when, and I, our schedules didn't yeah. match or whatever, but dude is... Funny as it's shit. It's pretty funny that you bring that up. Like, I just bought tickets and signed up for, like, this this Furnace Fest is what it's called in Alabama, and it's all, like, crazy-ass death metal. And You're going you know, to Alabama? You're going to an Alabama, hold on, you're going to an Alabama death on metal a weekend. concert? Yes. And, and I'm going with, oh my God. With, with, with my old bandmates, you know, from Chicago. When are you doing this? This is in, like, uh, September, but it's, like, on a weekend. Yeah. You're going to fly out there just for the weekend and fly back? Yes. Yes. Wow. I, it, it, because- Are you going to mosh with the corn-fed big dudes that from Alabama or what? Hell yeah. Oh, my God. Hell yeah. Like, I, that was one of those things. Like, I, I turned 40 this year. I was like, dude, this is one of the- It just popped up. It was an old festival that we had played, you know, a long time ago. Oh, I saw you share that in your story. You we're sharing the yeah. lineup, all the people that were going to be there. Yeah, I wanted to see if there was anybody else going that listens to the show or anything, or if yeah. I'd run into anybody. Because it's a very niche, you know, like music. Like nobody, there's not a lot of people that listen to this shit. So I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get into things that I used to really love again, and, yeah. and this is one of those things. So I'm like really excited about it. Dude. Do you know, you know, uh, who got me to listen to it at all was a female uh, roommate of mine. Really, in, in my mid twenties, I was like twenty. That's rare a because female? yeah, yes. no way. girls yeah. usually hate this kind she of. She introduced yeah. me to like Dropkick Murphy, all that. Like I didn't know any of that stuff. Oh, I, at all. I didn't know any punk. I didn't know any death metal. I didn't know any. That's all she listened. And you know, sounds bl- like a cool hey, chick, blonde hair, blue eyed girl. Like you would just didn't yeah. like did not fit what the demographic didn't. Look. She was a, a paralegal too. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, you would ne- you would just never. <laughs> she sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, that's, she was rad. Right. We yeah. were like we were best friends. Did she play video games too? She didn't play videos, but okay. she snowboarded. Uh, I was going to say, it would have been, yeah. been too we, She was almost a unicorn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. almost. Yeah, my be- well, my, one of my, my best friends was dating her for quite some time, uh, but we were uh, we were good friends for a bit. That's, I just listen to you talk about it. I'm like, who got me to listen to death metal first? I'm like, you know what? It's funny. There's yeah. a chick well, that see, got me to listen to I it listen first. to it exclusively to lift weights. It's, it's, it just puts me in the mood, and it gets me to – I get this real good aggressive energy. It's very, very distinct. Oh, yeah. But Justin legit listens to it – Like all the time. Yeah, just no, relaxing. It annoys it, the it fuck does. out of me. We'll be driving. It's relaxing. We're driving somewhere, it's right? Just angry like, it's like <laughs> It's like – It calls eight, me down. 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. We're heading to like some interview we're going to do or in another <laughs> state. I'm like drinking my coffee. Coffee, waking up and Justin, I'm like Justin puts on music. It's like I'm like, whoa, bro! You're like, oh, it's too much. Yeah, yeah. way too fast. You yeah. you got to work your way up to me to get me to ready oh, for that. Oh, that's funny. But it, it is funny when I was, I'm listening to the lyrics, and of course I'm thinking like, yeah, mostly men listen to this and boys. Mm-hmm. It's angsty lyrics. This is legit because two reasons. One. Uh, boys and men are not encouraged to express their feelings. It's just not. And number two, I think biologically, we also don't express them kind of naturally as easily. So you combine those two things and you get a lot of feelings. And really the only feeling that's acceptable that we let out is just pissed. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm sad. So I'm gonna let it out as pissed, or you know, I'm I'm a little depressed. I'm gonna right. let it out as pissed. I'm confused. It's gonna come out Turn as anger. It into anger. Yeah, let yeah. it all come out yeah. in anger. Hey, know? was it was it you, Justin, Music. or you, Sal, yesterday that was talking to me about the uh, the movies and SEO thing about the movie that actually like went back and changed their name? Yeah, like, that was me. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I had just read something. Uh, it was about Harley Quinn, that movie that just came out. Oh, uh, Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. they had it. It was just called Birds of Prey, and so I guess because of that. Uh, people searching 
online and everything. I guess they didn't know the actual release date of it or anything. And so their, their ticket sales were affected by that. And so then they went back and, and, you know, put Harley Quinn, I think in front of the title and then birds of prey. Mm. And then they got like a, a, a way bigger spike in, in oh, ticket wow. sales. Wow. Interesting. So I know it still plays a factor. I know it's still tanked though. Well, what, what, yeah, it yes, did it's tank not still. doing well. Why is that? Why? Because people are searching Harley Quinn more. I think it might be because birds of prey probably brings up birds of prey, you know, like actual birds of, of yeah, prey. Well, I don't think, I think too, people, people don't really know to search that, you know, like that, that movie title versus like Harley Quinn. I want to see the Harley Quinn movie. That's you true. Know, and it's like you're, birds of prey. Like I wouldn't even know to search for that. That's true. That's oh, that's true. weird. That's a weird thing. Now, did you see what they said? Because the movie didn't perform well at all. No. They were saying it's because uh, sexism. Like the reason nobody watched the movie is because it's an all female cast or whatever. Well, that's what they said about the Ghostbusters. One yeah. Too, and I was like, no, it just sucked. Yeah. You, <laughs> Why can't it just suck? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. understand. <laughs> there, there's good ones out there, you know, just like, it, you know, sometimes they suck. Now, you know who loved that movie? Mm. Who watched it and loved it? Who? My 14 year old son. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Why do you think? Bro? Yeah, yeah. I've never seen it. Why do you horse. think? I don't know. Yeah. He's like, he's like, his, his mom want to take him to the movies, and and yeah. she's like, so what movie do you want to watch? He's like, oh, it's a, it's like a super villain movie, you know, called Birds of Prey, and I'm listening to him like, right. well, I gotta be honest, DC has not been hitting very well. No, like they, I mean, the last well, one was Wonder Woman was did did well, I now, think, and was, that was great. Was Joker DC the one that came out with Joaquin? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's in that that franchise. That one so, crushed. Yeah, that, that did you know do very well. That one crushed. But this whole this other you know series or whatever not doing well. Yeah. But it's funny because my son wanted to watch it, and after he hangs up on the phone, I'm like, "So you like uh, <laughs> you're a fan of uh, of that movie, huh? Yeah. I'm like, which one's your favorite uh, supervillain? Yeah. And he's like, huh? What are you doing? <laughs> like, what right, do you bro. Yeah. You, the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I know exactly <laughs> why you like that movie. You know he comes home. I'm like, did you like it? He's like, yeah, it was a great movie. Yeah. And then I read the reviews. I'm like, it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> You're lying. Yeah. Dude, uh, I was also looking up uh, like latest tech stuff. Like there was this release of a phone that looks almost like, you remember in the 1990s, they had that flip phone that was, uh, I mean, it was like a pretty staple phone. Oh, the new Samsung folding one? Yeah. So, but it's not the folding one like, um, like it folds out. Uh, so, so it looks like a tablet. It's, yeah. it's like it, it flips up. So it, like you sit it down and it's flipping up like this. So you can actually sit it oh. like on your table and it like, you, you know, you can take video and stuff from that, but then it, then it opens all the way up and it becomes like a regular size phone. So it's interesting. It, it just looks, it's, it's funny cause it, it's like nostalgic cause it goes back to that like same look of like the, mm. flip the Nokia phone. flip phone. Like it, it now but it's the, all like one screen. Oh, it is. The yeah. whole thing the is whole a thing's screen. One screen. Now I oh, didn't, I thought didn't Samsung, they, they did a Foley model and it, it didn't do well. Right. Didn't they have a bunch of problems with it? Like yeah. they came out with this, I, this, they got like dust and stuff in the cracks of it or whatever. And it right. was like, so I, I, I know it was a function. It was just, it was, was just a big deal like like a year ago or less it was this phone that was supposed to fold out and open up to be like a, a either a massive tablet but they had all kinds of issues oh there it is right there oh, yeah, yeah. look at that is that yeah. the new is that the new one that you're talking about yeah i think uh yeah that's it yeah, yeah. so it's there's yeah there's, that's the samsung one yeah yeah so there's the galaxy z flip and the moto razor yeah i they're this is they're getting pretty cool at some point i feel like they're gonna have it's gonna get so flexible that it's gonna be like a a tube that you roll out. Oh, see, so yeah. like I think that. at some point it's going to get obsolete. Like we won't. I think it's going to be like it'll be in your ear all the time, and you'll just be able to call Sal yeah. or text text Justin. And what this. you'll see it in front of your eyeball, like y in the movies. Yeah. Well, either either that, either that, or you'll have something else that if you need to display a screen, like it'll be something really small, and then it shoots it up well, on the wall, the, and it'll be. Well, the second. Yeah, that I they, wonder when that's going to happen. The the big can't be far from that. No, and the bottleneck is the is us, right? The bottleneck between technol this technology is how fast we can search for something and how fast we can receive the information, which is limited by mm. natural human barriers. Mm -hmm. The second they can go, they can move past that with like, uh, what's his name? I was talking the about Neuralink. The, yes. Yeah. Elon. This, that'll be the, one of the biggest, most incredible breakthroughs. Don't know what it'll cause. It could be good and <laughs> bad, but the, the ability to be able to think and search. Yeah. You don't want to be an early adopter to that. No, that's for sure. It's going to be weird. It'll be like a, a I mean, a complete extension of your brain, which yeah. is going to be very, very strange. It's already wild to me. Like sometimes I take it for granted, like what we have the capability, like how often does this happen in your day today where you have a question about something, whether it be science related or you're debating somebody about just look it up. Right. And you and how quick I can look up the opposing argument, the argument to support it, watch and listen to both of them from like 
really brilliant minds. Like, I mean, that's just crazy to me that we have access like that. Like never, well, never in history before will we have something like that. It wasn't that long ago that if you got in an argument or debate with your friend, you just had to argue your side, go back and forth. You'd ask other people around you to see who they agree with. Right, right. Now it's like, I'm right. No, I'm right. Look it up. I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that's it. We're done. Really? Yeah. Seriously. So, I, it's, it's wild. I know. It's really crazy. But all of this, it's funny because we thought, you know, for a long time that if we just had access to all the information, we would solve a lot of our problems because we thought a lot of our problems was literally just a lack of information. And what we're realizing is that's a small part of the problem. The next part is is wisdom, which you can't really get from just having information. So now we have a bunch of people with access to tons of information, yeah. but it's not necessarily making them you know wiser, better people. Right. No. All right, our first question is from Emily Gregoire Fitness. I recently started working out with a new trainer who has me doing more chest work than I've ever done before. Being a very small-breasted woman, is my pec development going to make my chest look bigger? Okay, that's actually a good question. Usually the, the question I get around chest exercises from women is, are these exercises going to make my boots smaller? Yeah. Um, so one thing to understand is that spot reduction it, it actually doesn't happen. So what that means is if I train a part of my body, my body doesn't burn body fat from just that area. It, it's a systemic fat loss, and your genetics largely determine where you lose fat from. So if you're a woman and you're working out and you're getting overall leaner, the odds are you will lose some breast size, but it has nothing to do with the chest work. It's because you're getting leaner. Right. Now, as far as the chest exercises, okay, this is anecdote, um, but from all, from the female clients that I trained- Incline press. Yeah, they all said that it lifted yeah, their, their breasts. Yeah, that's why I like incline. Yeah, because mm -hmm. underneath your, your, your breasts are obviously your pec muscles, and if your pec muscles are more developed, it's going to lift- your 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 breasts and make them appear to be more whatever perkier or whatnot. So it's it's not something you should avoid. That's for sure. Yeah, don't avoid it. And it, and we really are. It's splitting hairs. What we're talking about too. Like you're not gonna you're not gonna do a bunch of chest exercises gonna make your boobs massive. You're not gonna do a bunch of chest exercises gonna make them disappear. Like it's just it's it's an exercise that you should probably be doing. Um, I don't know as a trainer if I would put uh, extra emphasis in it. Like if I had a client that was. That came to me like, hey, I, I, you know, is there something we can do to build my boobs? Or right. I, I don't think I would add a, a, a in the routine just because no. I think there's I think about uh, you know the rhomboids like you know more so just to, to be able to support uh, you know good posture with yeah and, and exactly and that yeah. is because in my experience uh, I mean most everybody suffers from some sort of upper cross syndrome I think it's even more common in women than it is in men and I I think that for the most part I would be teaching my client because here's the thing too you know it'll make your boobs look great is standing up with great posture one of my favorite mm -hmm. things to take a client who had this kind of like you know this this slouch shoulder forward head yep. and and they would come in and they tell me about how, how they want to look and then just they they would be kind of really down on themselves and be a limit and i'd take them over to the mirror and i would i would do this posture check with them and i'd hold them that and i'm like look at yourself you look like when you stand upright i don't care man or woman you stand upright and you're you look like you've lost 10 pounds just from good oh, posture absolutely. so i would put a lot of my energy with with clients that you know felt that way like the boobs were sagging or my my, my curves mm -hmm. or my body didn't look good just by getting um her to stand up well, right have really good posture boy really accentuates all of their curves and their their natural that their body looks already yeah so your your posture sends uh, a signal to people uh, on the outside that t that gives them a clue uh as to your physical strength and health that's obvious but also your emotional state, your posture reflects oftentimes your emotional state. So if I were to say right now, imagine a, you know, a 17 year old girl who's depressed and sad. And now what kind of posture do you automatically imagine? If I say to you, think of somebody that just won a sporting event and is, is has incredible energy. What kind of posture do you tend to imagine? Posture, and remember, communication is mostly nonverbal and your posture is part of that. So that's 100% right, Adam. When you correct your posture, regardless of anything else, even if you don't change your body composition, you're sending a healthier signal. And attractiveness is, it, it, the root of attractiveness is health. So all the things that we tend to view as attractive, even though we, we try to trick each other with things like makeup and, and, and surgeries and all that, and clothes and all that stuff, at the end of the day, really the root of it is you're, you're exemplifying health. And so when you're healthy, 
you just look much more attractive. Now, as far as this question is concerned, I don't I don't think this trainer is emphasizing chest work. I think she's just doing more chest work than ever before because in my experience, when I trained female clients they who have avoid, exercise they avoid it. yes, yeah. yeah. When they have exercise history, when I would look at their workouts, the the thing that they trained the last the least was always chest. Yeah, it was just something they so didn't. That, they didn't that's focus fair. On. Like I don't, I definitely don't want to rag on a trainer. I don't know. Like for all you know, her doing three sets a week of of chest may be the more most than she's ever done ever done before. Yeah, have, I mean, did you guys ever get that comment from a female client where she's just like, "Wow, we're doing so much chest work," and yeah. it's like, "Well, yeah. this is normal. It's actually yeah. balanced, right, right? You know, based off of what you were, you know, what you did before." And balance always looks really good. Imbalances don't. So. There is a, a a healthy balance between the back and the chest mm-hmm. and between the upper and lower body. You know, symmetry, balance, these are terms that you hear in, in bodybuilding or bikini or physique. So avoiding one part of the body is going to uh, be detrimental to your aesthetics. Because bal- And they do this with face. By the way, face, when, when they try to figure out like the science behind what makes someone uh, someone's face attractive – Symmetry and balance mm-hmm. are the two things that we can measure scientifically. Your body has this as well, so you don't want to avoid working a particular area. And again, uh, spot reduction is a myth, so don't worry. You're not going to lose your your boobs because you work out your chest. On the flip side, you know, you're not going to be able to get your stomach leaner by working your abs. It's got to be overall leaner. And you want to have good balance and you want to have good posture because it it looks healthy and healthy is attractive. Next question is from Julie Cassandra. How do you alter your diet or training versus how do you alter your diet on training versus non-training days? I I love this and Yeah, I feel like we're going to have a, a a discussion around this cuz I think you and I are a little different. Yeah, well I I really uh love to manipulate this. Like so um and I do this all the time with uh, weekends especially. I've tracked um my movement, my activity, my workouts uh so consistently for so long that I, I've, I've really got a pretty good idea. So even though I'm not tracking right now, I have a good idea of like what a Saturday looks like or what a good Saturday looks like, what a bad Saturday looks like. And what I mean by good and bad is by my activity level. Like, am I, was I very active that day? Did I, you know, did I train like I, I, I need to in order to get my movement and my calorie burn up uh, on a Saturday or Sunday? Um, in comparison to like a Monday where I'm starting my day really early and I'm moving a lot and I normally get my workouts always. So uh, I like to adjust my calories that way. I mean, we already talk about the benefits of undulating calories anyways and not having like this, you know, uh, linear calorie intake where it's just like you always, you know, your diet says you eat 13 or 1500 calories or whatever. And so every day you do that. Mm-hmm. Um I just like to break it up. Like I think, and and it makes the most sense to eat less food on the days when I feel like I need the less food because I'm not moving and I'm not pushing the body. It's an off day of working out, so uh, I that's what I'll do on my tr- on my training uh, on my training days. I, I make sure I'm fed. I make sure that I I'm taking care of my body. If I'm going to push up on calories a little bit, um, I just I just had this the other night with Katrina. We were talking. This was like two nights ago. And, uh, you know, I, I knew I needed to get at least another like two meals in and it was already like six o'clock because I was just behind on calories and I had a really good hard training session. And yes, I could not eat and get benefits of burning more calories, but I'm trying to build uh, at the moment and I want to make sure that I reap the benefits of a hard training session like that. So I want to be fed. Now, if I hadn't trained that day, and I'm still behind calories, and I'm. I would actually not worry about it. I would probably skip a meal and be low calorie that day because I'm the the need for the extra calories is less important when I haven't sent a signal to build muscle. If I just sent a, a, a loud signal to build muscle, uh, that, in my opinion, is is the one of the best times to make sure that I'm I'm getting adequate calories and protein versus a day where I don't train at all, a day like that, I might skip a meal. Yeah, see, this is where I think you and I are different. By the way, I don't think there's a wrong answer here. So uh, so the way Adam's doing it, perfectly fine, if that's your preference. I think that's a great strategy, and a lot of what you said makes uh, perfect sense. Now, for me, it's actually, believe it or not, it's a, it's a little bit of the reverse. On my workout days, I prefer to eat a little bit less. I like to have a lighter feel. I like to, uh, I'm a little busier typically on the days that I work out. So I don't feel like I want to eat as much. On the days off, 
I like to eat a little bit more. I feel like it helps me recover on the days in between. And here's the other thing that I've, and this is my own theory, but when you're sedentary, um, you are, you're, you're sending an atrophy signal to your muscle, even if you worked out the day before. So, and again, you can test this yourself. You can work out super hard today and then stay in bed for two days and see that you actually end up losing muscle, even though you worked out really hard, you know, the, the day before. Um, and I used to do this as a kid. I used to think sitting around would help me recover faster. Later on, I realized I actually got to move because I have to continue to send that muscle building signal. Now, one way to offset that, and it, this is, again, my theory is to keep the calories high and keep the protein high. High calories, high protein by themselves, not always, okay? And it's not, this is not a, like a, a great strategy all the time, but in combination with exercise, I think it works great. When your calories are high and your protein's high by itself, independent of workout and anything else, it does send a anabolic signal. In fact, if you take the average person, don't change anything about their 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 lifestyle at all, and just bump their calories into protein, you'll see a little bit, a tiny bit of muscle mass gain and strength gain. Now it's limited. If you, it's not going to gain tons of muscle. You end up getting more fat uh, if you if you stay on that path. But there is a bit of a of a boosting effect. So when I'm sedentary, eating more, it feels to me like I am able to send more of that signal. So I I would do this also when I I was competing and I was really consistent. Um, and I too don't I, I like this strategy. I don't coach this way though because I know the t- average person doesn't have the same self discipline as I do. And what I what I've noticed with clients. Is that if I give them the okay to feed more when they're sedentary? Oh, they just have more access mm-hmm. to food, and, right? Yeah. They, they tend to make worse choices. Great point. And so um, I agree with everything you're saying, and I too will manipulate and play around with my food like that too. And I think it's great to go both ways if you have the control and discipline to do both. Um, but behaviorally speaking, I notice that clients, that if I tell them on Saturday that they can have a surplus of calories, they have a harder time controlling it versus telling them, hey, you're not moving nor as, in near as much, so we don't need to feed as much, so this is a day we actually need to reduce. And so I'm telling them to reduce, knowing too that they still might kind of overeat a little bit, so I tend to, no, to you're push right. that direction. You're 100% mm-hmm. right because connecting my activity today to my food intake today is a great strategy to help people monitor their food intake. Plus, when you're sedentary and you're sitting around, you're oftentimes sitting around snack food. Yes, sitting not doing much, watching TV, watching yeah. TV. Yeah. Mindless eating starts to happen. It's more cravings. Yes, at that point. absolutely. That's why. I, yeah, for me uh, personally, like I definitely tend to not eat as much if I'm sedentary, just because it's just I've conditioned myself to not seek it out as much because it is. It, it was always craving type foods that I, I tended to want to gravitate towards. Uh, mm-hmm. with, with that, you know, mentality. So, but yeah, I, I do like going into workouts, not with a lot of calories. Like I, I like to go into the workout, but then replenishing, uh, you know, after the workout, I tend to eat quite, quite a bit. So. Yeah. So for, for those of you who are, who have the discipline to do this, I, I love to feed myself a lot on the, on the days before I have hard workouts, um, when I'm more sedentary. So I do that. Then when I go into my workout, I have less food, but I did eat the day before, right? And I have great workouts. I typically get good pumps, and I'm really strong. So I used to always prepare for my workout with my food intake the day before rather than the day of because I like the excess calories, the carbs, but I don't like the feeling like I just ate. So I like to go in with the slightly fasted feeling but also have the energy from the day before. Next question is from Tommy James 81 do you have an elevator pitch for trying to convince family members of the benefits of resistance training? Yeah, you know, uh, th- by, th- by the way, one of Mind Pump's goals is to convince people uh, of the benefits of resistance training. Now, the reason for this is because today, even now, resistance training still is not considered uh, the, the general health form of exercise for the average person. Mm-hmm. When the average person is recommended, you know, to to be more active, you know, if you, you go to the doctor and the doctor's like, hey, you need to improve your activity or increase your activity, or they think, God, I should really exercise more to improve my health. The average person typically doesn't think about resistance training. They don't think I'm going to lift weights. Like my mom doesn't think I need to be more active. I should go lift weights. She thinks I need to be more active. I'm going to walk or get on the treadmill or swim or ride a bike. It's all cardiovascular type of activity. Nothing wrong with that, but if you compare them head to head and you had to pick just one, resistance training is superior. So here's the elevator pitch, and you've probably heard us 
say this a million times on the podcast, but the same amount of time that you spend resistance training versus other forms of exercise yields you far greater results. I can train someone for you know two, two hours a week. That's it, two hours a week. And over time, that two hours a week is going to result in a much faster metabolism and an easier time maintaining a lean body weight than someone who did two hours of cardio a week or two hours of any other form of exercise. So the pitch is really this. What do people really want? They, they, they want convenience. They don't want to work out a lot. Average person is not working out. So how can I do more with less? Sell them on that. Sell them on the fact that you don't need to work out as much and resistance training will give you better results. It'll speed up your metabolism so you can sit there and burn more calories uh, without having to do more exercise. Those, in my opinion, have been the best, uh, like I think the best sales points, if you will, with resistance training. You know, th this is really this is really hard, right? Um, trying to convince a family member who, who doesn't want to work out to work out. And I haven't had a lot of success with this at all um, to the point where uh, I've got to a point where I just don't even worry about it. I just, I try and live my life as an example, as best I can. Wait for them to ask. And wait yeah. for them to ask. And, and that, in my opinion, is one of the best. The other thing is this, is this reminds me of something that like I'm, I'm reading uh, this uh, uh, book right now called Great. Great teams, sixteen things that all great teams do, or something shit like that, and it's talking about <laughs> leadership stuff. And it reminds me of the success that I have had, though, with some family getting getting through to them uh, that wasn't working. Out. And the way I got through to them is to make them feel something, right? I could sit there and break the science down all day long and, and talk about the benefits of it and the difference of lean mass versus fat mass and blah 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 blah, and try and sell 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 them on it. And for the most part, I'm, I'm not going to get through to them. But if I can show them something and make them feel something, uh, then then maybe I can get the buy-in. And this is true in just leadership. Like this is a very good and important thing to do with your staff and building a culture. And the uh, same thing goes for, for leading your family into the gym. And for me, uh, I like to find something posture or aches and pains because I can show them something mm -hmm. like right then and there that sometimes will just blow somebody's mind. Like somebody, I'll have a family member that's like, you know, complaining of chronic hip pain or low back pain or shoulder pain. And they've just, and in their mind, they're just old. They're just old and it's mm -hmm. always nagging them. And when I can get to the root of what's going on, if it's obviously not an acute injury where they, they tore something or broke a bone and it's just chronic pain, I can normally give them a few movements to, to l relieve it like instantly right then yep. and there. And when they feel that and the, and you just spent like five minutes with them doing something, uh, that's the things that normally would, if I got somebody, that would perk them up. Because mm -hmm. most people just, we all want to you know, lose a little bit of body fat, build a little bit of muscle, look a little bit yeah, better. You're not going to do that in a couple sessions. Right, you can't do that. Right, mm -hmm. You can't even do that in a great workout. I, can't, I can show you a workout and it'd be an amazing workout, but you're not going to give them that. But a, a good portion of my family deals with chronic pain. It's just it, it, as you age and get older, and if you haven't addressed your movement patterns, uh, more than likely, your family member is dealing with either knee, hip, shoulder, back, something. And if you learn and understand the body well enough, or you have something like Maps Prime Pro, shameless plug, but if, you, if you've got a tool like that, and you can help them by showing them that, and then when they feel that, man, it's a lot easier to convince them on the importance of coming in and exercising and training. Uh, that, to me, has been the most success. Uh, with a you know quote unquote uh, elevator pitch to somebody mm -hmm. because I feel like I could try and sell you all day long on something and it just ain't gonna happen. I've had a very similar experience um, and mainly mainly like waiting you know I waited out till till they'll come ask you know they they obviously know what I do for a living and so it's like it presents itself uh, sometimes to where I can kind of you know, steer them in that direction. But usually it is, it is through like some kind of a pain or some kind of a condition or something they're going through that I know that, okay, this is going to at least start building the conversation in that direction. Like, uh, for my dad, for instance, he's been doing the same routine forever. He goes to the spa and he does the stair master and he does all this stuff. And now he's experiencing all this repetitive stress pain. And, and for me to just kind of take him through and, and show like, uh, you know, how to correct that through mobility, but also through like proper mechanics and squatting and adding resistance to that, building strength around the hips and 
um, you know, has really been helping, uh, you know, alleviate a lot of pain. And so I think pain is a very, very uh, effective tool to, you know, to, to really convince people that this is this is the best tool for the job is right. to get stronger overall. Like that's where you're going to be in a place where, you know, doing the rest of your life is going to be that much better. Your quality is just going to go way up. Oh, yeah. This is what you do as a trainer when you would get a, a potential client. Right. If you could show them pain, which you could show them pain. It's relief, the best conversation. In one session. Uh, you're going to get a new client. You ain't going to show them fat loss. You ain't going to show them muscle building. You know, I mean, to be clear, the only success I've ever had with convincing family members to, to do resistance training are ones who already made the decision to start working out. Yeah. Then it's a matter of what kind of workout. Right. You know, so they come to me and say, you know what, I need, I need to start exercising. I think I'm going to start. Right. What do you think I should do? That's when the resistance training Right. You never walked up to one of your family members who's no. morbidly obese or has hey, diabetes. Hey, you should start, or start poking yeah. them in the belly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And said, or, <laughs> and, or had a pitch that got them all of a sudden to wake up no. and train. Like those people aren't going to live. If they weren't doing it before, they got to this place. They're not doing You're it like now. You're like at dinner, all of a sudden you bring the projector out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that well, I got you. You know what though? So I was that trainer in my first t- early 20s. So every, all of us I was were. so excited. Matter of fact, I know I remember like, I remember got in a fight with one of my, my buddies, like literally a fist fight over him being, what? yeah <laughs> what? yeah I'm, because he was so annoyed wow at hearing me like talk we would we go on this annual trip uh I, I know i've shared with you guys maybe off air maybe not on the show before that we used to do this every year we go up to lake uh, trinity which is up to yeah. shasta yeah we go up there for 10 days same friends same people like 50 people go and meet at these campsites and we go there and you know when i we, i've been doing it since i was a kid well, you know, all after high school, college, and then moving to San Jose, then getting a job as a personal trainer, 20 years old, fell in love with a job. I mean, I've, we've all talked about this, like how much we were passionate about it. Hey, when you're truly passionate about something, you fucking talk about it. But in your 20 and you don't have this, probably the social awareness or self-awareness. <laughs> to know that you're annoying everybody. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So, but it, it, the people I'm talking to, they want to hear it. It's the other people that are always around me, like my best friend who I got in a fight with is just like, because he was always constantly- yeah. All you do is, is talk, enough, yeah, man. yeah, tired, of tired of hearing hearing me uh, talk about my job, but you know I, that's how I was. I was trying to sell everybody on how amazing it is and why you need to do this, and <laughs> you know nobody fucking Just was drinking the Kool Aid except for yeah. myself, you know. So you learn as you get older, and you've been in training for a long time that. It's it's like anything else. You're not gonna people have to want to do it first if they're gonna do it. The best and, thing is just to be the example, and then what people start to wonder is why is you know why does Justin have so much energy or why does Adam always look so good? It's like or, pushing a religion on somebody. It's totally. Mm-hmm. It's like being a Bible it's, thumper. It's nobody no likes nobody. Nobody likes that guy. No, or just girl be the example. Yes, you be the example. You want to be the person who they are like. Oh my God, I can't Sal is fucking almost Whatever sixty. Whatever you're and doing, look how I want good to do he it. looks. Like yeah. and look how good he moves. Like tell me more. You That's know, that, it. You know. Next question is from that fly guy. What's the best way to learn how to eat new healthy foods that you haven't enjoyed in the past? I can't stand salmon and most fish, but I want the health benefits. Can you teach yourself to like new foods? Oh, you completely. Dude, I've done this a lot lately. You totally can do this. One of the big problems with, with, uh, I guess, uh, modern life and and our food is that we've only learned to value food for its palatability. And if that's the only value you place on food, yeah, you're not going to like a lot of stuff. You're going to like only the stuff that is super hedonistic uh, while you eat it. Um, but you can make associations. And by the way, food companies know this. They've been advertising to you in this way for a long time. Once you, I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll tell a story. I've told this story before, but I love it because it was one of my favorite learning experiences with a client. I had a client that had one of the worst diets you've ever seen in your whole entire life, never ate any vegetables ever, made her gag, made her throw up. Now, over time, I slowly convinced her to at least try, I would tell her, eat one broccoli floret. Uh, to start with once a week. And what she would do is she would track how she felt. Once she got to the to point where she was eating like a serving here and there, she started to write things down like digestion is better, mood feels better, uh, I have more energy, my skin is starting to look better. As she started to make those connections and associate the vegetables with those good feelings, she started to actually desire to eat yeah. the broccoli. She started to want to eat the broccoli and because of that association, you actually learn to like the taste. Mm-hmm. You actually learn to enjoy the taste. This happened to me with fish. When I I hated fish when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Could not stand fish whatsoever. Then, you know, fast forward, I'm in my mid-20s. 
and I go to Italy. And by this point, I started to really understand good nutrition. I started to understand the, the, ben, the value of fish. And so I said to myself, look, I'm going to Italy. It's a country right in the Mediterranean. I mean, I have access to incredible fish. They eat a lot of fish there anyway. I'm going to go and I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to try it. I'm going to pay attention to how I feel. By the end of my vacation, I actually developed a uh, an appreciation for fish. Now, don't get me wrong. A steak, in terms of the taste and palatability, kicks the crap out of fish for me. However, I went from someone who hated fish to someone now who had learned to enjoy it. So you totally. Well, yeah. and if you're not a big fish eater, I wouldn't recommend jumping to salmon first either. I would I would recommend going somewhere like sea bass, mahi mahi, halibut, uh, like the wider fishes. Like if you're not a fish lover, um, you know salmon has a strong fish salmon taste. Unless you have like if you go somewhere and get um, and that's to me when you find amazing salmon is when it doesn't taste fishy. Right. Like amazing, really good fresh salmon. Yeah. T- doesn't taste fishy. But if you're not a fish lover already and you go directly to salmon, it's not a good place to start. You, I, I would always start somebody off with the halibut, the sea bass, the mahi-mahi. I'm trying to think what else I'd love to. Yeah, that's what got me into it was the halibut. Yeah, yeah oh my God, got, those are amazing. Yeah, a meaty, meaty taste to it. It's, really me, good. it's meaty. It doesn't taste fishy. It even has like this buttery. It's saw Like it just doesn't taste anything like salmon. Salmon is yeah. salmon is fishy. Right? And it took me a long time to like, like salmon. So, yeah. And I was just like you, Sal. I didn't like fish at all. Yeah. Um, um, and it, it took me a long, t- except for uh, tuna and drowned it in mayonnaise when I was a kid, oh. right? So that's how I ate that when I was a kid. Other than that, I ate no fish till I got older. Same thing. Had to like kind of make myself like it. And the and I did too, because everyone talks about all that, the benefits of salmon. We all know that salmon is like one of the most nutrient rich fish that you can get. So as I started to learn about that, I began to gr- try and force myself to eat salmon. And it was, it was rough for me to do that. When I, then I found like halibut and sea bass and my, all these other fishes. I'm like, oh my God, like I love those. Then I got used to eating that a lot and then inter- and having salmon different ways. Like, and now I, I mean, uh, my favorite thing to have is uh, salmon sashimi. Like, I'll eat raw salmon now. I love that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's funny. I mean, this is still a bit of a struggle for me, as you guys know, like uh, in terms of like sushi and everything else and eating fish in general. But like, I used to have a really good association with it to start with because I fished. Like, I would oh, fish. Makes a difference. And yeah. then I would cut and, and do the, like, I would, you know, like gut it and everything and cook it myself. And it was like fantastic. Fantastic, but uh, you know, somewhere along the lines, I, I, I went away from it, and then I had a bad experience because I was like eating it in the Midwest somewhere, and it was just like I had just like bad examples of fish. So I think you know to to kind of you know rekindle that, like it, it does make sense to go somewhere where you're like right next to the coast, or you're you're near a lake, or, or you know make sure like you're in a fresh spot, and it's not like being transferred there from somewhere else, uh, and just start like slowly you know incorporating it back in, and I'm. Trying trying even right now like i tolerate it like if somebody serves it to me i'm gonna eat it you know it's fine but i'm not seeking it out like i should be uh but yeah i had the same thing with with uh, vegetables i mean i grew up and it was like i mean looking back now too because my dad was uh, an only child and he would actually my my grandma was sick all the time so he actually cooked for everybody in his family even as a kid and so you know as a kid what do you want to eat it's all bland it's you know it's yeah it's very simple like microwavable <laughs> crap and yeah. so like that was his palate and then he brought that into our family and then we we're just eating like uh, an example of a salad was like iceberg lettuce and celery and carrots and like ranch yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. like that's what i grew up with you know what i mean yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's taken i've taken a lot of steps uh and, and i get a hard time everywhere i go you know from from courtney and her family Dude. but like i've done a lot of work on this and like i'm, I'm eating no, uh, associations to food is a real thing look yeah. if it, to most americans if you walk into a market and you smell a strong fish smell, most of us are like, oh, that's gross. In Asian countries, it's not. To them, the association is totally different. They smell the fishy smell from a market. It's like, yes, I'm around mm-hmm. really good food. They get hungry, probably. Yeah. That's right. It's it's the associate. Like Jessica did the same thing. She grew up eating zero vegetables as a kid. Yeah. Zero. She ate nothing. She almost in- subsisted entirely on heavily processed food. As she got older and learned about health, she slowly introduced vegetables, started to identify the value that it was providing her body, built that association, 
and now she loves vegetables. Oh, I, I was the same way. We didn't. It wasn't until even Doug. Uh, I, I hated Brussels sprouts. I eat Brussels sprouts bowls. That's of them, my go-to. Yeah, uh, every week now. Dude, I that mean, used to be a food that we made fun of as kids. Yeah, yeah. you remember that? Yeah, oh, disgusting. They were. Oh, yeah. totally. Think about it this way. Here's another good example. I bet most people have a food that they ate as a kid that they associated with like fun or something like that. That if you didn't have that association, it would literally be disgusting. Like I'll give you an example: uh, macaroni and cheese in the box, right? Kraft macaroni and cheese. It's gross. That's it's just good. It's disgusting. <laughs> but you know what? I associated it you with chop up some hot dogs in it. Oh, too. Terrible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's garbage. But when I was a kid, yeah, five cheese. One. When I was a kid, when we would have my cousins over, I had cousins that liked it for whatever reason, yeah, yeah. and so it was like the special treat and. You know, what my mom would be like, whatever, I'll buy it for you. And she'd make it. And it was this fun food. So now to this day, if I smell it or I taste it, I have that positive fun association. No, you're so right. You can 100% train yourself this way. It just takes time. But start to associate your food with its other values besides just the hedonistic value of it. Otherwise, you'll be stuck eating the, the, the processed, hyper palatable foods or the foods you grew up eating that you're super used to. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides resources and books we have a ton up there that are totally free they'll help you out with your fitness you can also find us on instagram you can find justin at mind pump justin you can find me at mind pump sal and adam at mind pump adam